Hello, this is Mike Hansen, and today we will be defining the Fourier transform and giving a little bit of an overview of how it can be useful in mathematics. So we ask ourselves, why is the Fourier transform useful? And the reason is, is because it gives us an alternative re representation of any continuous function. It can convert a function of time into a function of frequency. It can also represent any function with the sum of sines and cosines. This can be used in many different real world applications such as electronics, signal processing, audio processing, medical imaging, and there's many more. As you can see in the bottom, there's kind of a visual representation of the addition of simple sine and cosine waves um, to represent one single wave. Since the Fourier series is used only for periodic functions, we will find the Fourier transform which can be used for non-periodic functions. In order to use the Fourier transform, we will start by putting the Fourier series into a complex form by using complex exponentials. The reason why we do this is because complex exponentials can represent both sine and cosine waves, both real and imaginary numbers, and it also makes the equation easier to work with. As you can see here, we have a real axis and an imaginary axis. And as you can see, on the imaginary axis, we have an i times sine x term. And on the real, we have a cosine x term. All of these complex exponentials, which are e to the sum i x, can be represented by these two points on this graph. We can also represent these by using Euler's formula. As you can see in the green, we have Euler's formula for both cosine x and i sine x. Here's the definition of the Fourier series in non-complex form. Our first goal will be to represent the sines and the cosines using complex exponentials. We will first let n pi over l equal theta, just to make the equation easier to work with. So we'll go ahead and plug in theta for n pi over l in both terms here. By using Euler's formula, we know that cosine theta x is equal to e to the i theta x plus e to the negative i theta x over 2. And we also know that sine theta x is equal to e to the i theta x minus e to the negative i theta x over 2. By using Euler's formula, we know that cosine theta x is equal to e to the i theta x plus e to the negative i theta x all over 2. And we also know that sine theta x is equal to e to the i theta x minus e to the negative i theta x over 2i. We will then go ahead and plug in are what cosine and sine are equal to for inside of our Fourier series. Now, now we have the Fourier series in a complex form, but the next step will be in simplifying this to make it easier to work with. In order to simplify our new equation for the Fourier series in complex form, the first step we will do is factor out a one-half. As you can see, it comes out to the front in our second equation. Next, we will multiply our coefficients a n and b n through to our exponential terms. As you can see, they are expanded out here. We can then factor out e to the i theta x and e to the negative i theta x to result in our equation at the bottom. Next, we can multiply our 1 over i that is in front of both of our b n coefficients here by i over i. We can do this because technically i over i is just 1. So when we multiply 1 over i times i over i, we will get i over i squared. We also know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So our i over i squared is equal to i over negative 1, which will just basically turn it into a negative i. So we can change both of our 1 over i in front of both of our bn coefficients here, and we can just call that negative i. Here we have switched the signs for each i in front of our bn coefficients. We will now separate the summation in our equation for the Fourier series. If we have only one complex exponential to work with, we can simplify the equation even further. In order to do this, we can set n equal to negative n for the first summation here. By plugging in a negative n, two negatives will make a positive so we know that our equation will not be affected here. We can also call our coefficients equal to some c of n. For c of z when n equals 0, our coefficient is equal to a0 over 2. For the positive values of n, 
our C will be equal to AN plus IBN over 2. And for the negative values of C, will be equal to AN minus IBN over 2. Since the summations are from negative infinity to positive infinity, we can combine them together and also satisfy our coefficient C of N for both negative and positive values of N. We will then get to our simplified version of the Fourier series in complex form. This is equal to the sum from negative infinity to positive infinity, Cn, our coefficient, times e to the negative i theta x. We also remember that in the beginning we set theta equal to n pi over l, so we will go ahead and plug in n pi over l for theta. We will then come to our complex form of the Fourier series. In order to solve this, we must also be able to find the coefficient c of n in complex form. We know that c of n is equal to 1 over 2 times a n plus i b n. From our Fourier series definitions, we know what a n and b n are both equal to. By plugging in both a n and b n, we will be able to find c n. Here in our bottom equation, we have plugged in both values for a of n and b of n. By plugging in our a n and our b n coefficients, we can find c of n. We can simplify this even more by combining both integrals here. We now have c of n equal to 1 over 2 times 1 over l times the integral from negative l to l of our function f of x times cosine n pi x over l plus i sine n pi x over l with respect to x. We now know by using Euler's formula we can represent our cn coefficient to be equal to 1 over 2l times the integral from negative l to l of a function f of x times e to the i n pi x all over l with respect to x. And by getting there, we simply just plugged in Euler's formula for our cosine and i sine. So now we have our coefficient c of n in complex form. Now let omega be equal to n pi over l. And we will go ahead and plug omega into our coefficient equation. We will then set this equation equal to a function of omega. We will call this function big F of omega. We now know that the complex form of the Fourier series from an interval from negative L to L is equal to the summation of n equals negative infinity to positive infinity of big F omega times e to the negative i omega x. We know that big F of omega is just our coefficient and we can go ahead and plug that into our formula. Since omega equals n pi over L, we'll let delta omega, which is the change in omega, equal n pi over L. This means that every time n is changed in the summation, it'll go up some integer. And we will, our change in omega will always be pi over L. As you can see here, the graph represents uh, delta omega, which is the interval between wave numbers. So we know that the Fourier series will be evaluated at each pi over L. So now we will solve for L, which will be equal to pi over the delta omega. And we can then plug this into our Fourier series equation. And then by simplifying this, the coefficient will become um, delta omega over 2 pi. Since we now know the Fourier series of a periodic function from negative L to L, what if instead we want to find the function from an interval on negative infinity to positive infinity? This is where the Fourier transform comes in, as it is only for continuous functions that are non-periodic. So as L approaches infinity, the change in omega will also become zero. Delta omega will keep getting smaller and smaller as L gets bigger and bigger. This will call, cause the wave numbers to become continuous. So you can see in the graph on the right, each pi over L is our delta omega, and as delta omega approaches zero, these wave numbers become closer together until eventually they will all be continuous. We can plug this into our Fourier series, um, and we can change the summation to an integral from negative infinity to infinity, rather than having from L to L. So we'll see that f of x is equal to the integral of negative infinity to positive infinity times 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of our function f of x times e to the i omega x with respect to x 
times e to the negative i omega x with respect to omega. Notice that the inside of our function here is really just equal to what we found our big FW to be, which is 1 over 2 pi times the integral negative, pi, negative infinity to positive infinity f of x times e to the i omega x with respect to x. This will be known as the Fourier transform. As you can see in our equation, if we take the Fourier transform of a function f of x, we can represent this function as a function of omega by putting it into this formula. We also have a formula for the inverse Fourier transform. We can take the inverse Fourier transform of a function of omega and by computing the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of that function times e to the negative i omega x with respect to omega, we can find a function f of x. This is known as the inverse Fourier transform formula. In this video, we have defined formulas for both the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform. The next step would be to look at how the Fourier transform can help us solve PDEs, such as the heat equation. Thank you.